In this video, I'm going to be replacing almost every component of the cooling system on this 2007 BMW 328i. Now this process is going to be very similar on almost all of the E9X chassis besides the M3. So if you need a specific step that you're looking for or, or a specific component, just check out the timestamps down below. I'll try to label them as close to what they are as I can. Now all of the parts I'm using are from ECS Tuning and I'll have all of that stuff linked down in the description box as well. They have specific kits that you can buy depending on whatever you need. They have level one, level two, level three, and a couple of other components that we're gonna be replacing. I'll have all that stuff down below as well. Let's just get right to it. It's gonna be a long process. I'm not really looking forward to it, but we're gonna get it done anyways. This car has over 170,000 miles. So it's about time that almost all these cooling system components get replaced. We're talking about the water pump, thermostat, all of the hoses, expansion tank, all of the hard plastic lines, everything. We're just gonna replace it once and for all. And that's just gonna make it so much easier to not have to worry about it breaking down in the future. Now, the reason I said I'm not really looking forward to this whole process is because I think even though we fin when we finish all of this stuff, there is gonna be one more component which we're not filming today, and that's gonna be the heater core. And I believe that is leaking on this car, so it's gonna have to be replaced as well, but it's just not gonna be in this video. But as I said before, we're gonna be replacing all these hoses and now there are some upgrades. We have this ECS tuning billet adapter that goes right underneath that oil filter housing. Now the oil filter housing on these E9X cars do have coolant running through them as well. The upper radiator hose actually attaches to that housing. So if you have a coolant leak from the gasket that's underneath there, that's something that you're gonna to have to replace as well. And I already have that DIY filmed a long time ago. I'll have that linked in the description as well. So we're just gonna get right to it. I'm gonna give a quick overview first since we're gonna be replacing a lot of the stuff. We're gonna be removing the air box. We're gonna be removing the electric fan that's attached to the radiator. And then we're gonna actually start draining the cooling system. So make sure you have a way of disposing for that. We're gonna go ahead and catch all that coolant and we're gonna to try to drain as much of it out as we can. And then we're gonna start removing some hoses. Let's start by removing the air box. This intake section is held in with two T20 screws. With the screws out, there's just two tabs right here. You want to pull off the intake off of the tabs, and then you want to slide it by pushing it towards the engine. Now there is a hose clamp that's holding the intake boot to the air box, and that you can just use a flathead screwdriver or a six millimeter socket. You also have this connector for the mass airflow sensor, and we're just gonna pull that off. What you can do is you can lift this with your fingernail, this tab right here. You don't want to crack that because that's what holds the connector in place. When you lift that up, it should slide right out. Next up, we have the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the air box in place. When you're pulling the air box out, push off the intake boot first. Lifts right out. Before we can pull the fan off, we need to take off the automatic transmission cooler, which, got, which has to be done from underneath. Now on automatic cars, we're gonna have an automatic transmission cooler that attaches to the fan itself. And it's held in with a T25 screw. It should slide right out. You can also see that we have a zip tie in our case. This should be a bracket usually so we're missing that bracket that attaches to the bottom of the radiator, so we're gonna have to cut these zip ties. Now if you just have, if you have the bracket, you don't need to do anything, it'll just slide right out. Let's remove the fan by disconnecting the connector first. There's one tab on each side. This one's the one that's really hard to get to, but you can use a flathead against the fan itself to try to push it in. We have one more screw holding it in place. It is a T25, same as that cooler. There is a tab on the driver's side that you need to pull toward the engine. And while you're pulling that tab, you can lift up. Now you're probably gonna have a hard line right here, so it shouldn't be as difficult to pull it off. It just takes a little bit of finesse, but it will come out. 
We're going to be removing the radiator next. So in order to do that, we need to remove all of the hoses attached to the radiator. So we're going to start with this one at the very bottom so we can let it drain out as much as we can and have, make less of a mess later. To remove this lower hose, you have to release this clip. So you can pry it out from this side right here. And this is on the passenger side. And now you would just pull the hose off. It's a quick connect. So as soon as you pull it off, coolant will start coming out. Now since the cooling system is pressurized, you can actually open the expansion tank and it will allow some air to get in there and push out the rest of the coolant. All well, this flowing now. Next up, we have the lower radiator hose and same deal. Most of the hoses are gonna all have these kind of clips on them. Once you have the clip pried up, you can actually spray this section with like a silicone spray to make it easier to pull off um, or like PV blaster or something like that. Since we're not gonna be reusing this radiator, we can actually pry against this metal section to try to pull it off if just by pulling it doesn't work. Now we're on the driver's side, we're gonna remove this hose that goes into the radiator from the transmission cooler. It's just held in with one T25 screw, just like all the other ones. I've already got it loosened and pulled out. With that out of the way, we can just pull the hose out. It's only gonna be held in with an O-ring at this point. We wanna keep pulling off the rest of the stuff that's attached to the radiator. In order to remove this upper radiator hose, first we're gonna remove this heater hose that attaches to the bottom. We have the quick connect clip. And it's gonna to pull towards the bottom. We also need to remove this hose that attaches to the expansion tank. You just wanna loosen the hose clamp, and then you just pull it straight off. Now when it comes to the upper radiator hose, same thing again, we have the quick connects. We're just gonna pull these off all the way. It makes it easier to pull it off. This, just like that lower radiator hose, is gonna be pretty stuck on there. And if you're not replacing your radiator, you really wanna be careful when you're taking these hoses off. That way you don't crack the radiator. Now, since we are gonna be replacing all this stuff, I mean, I can pry whichever way I want, but when you're trying to pull it off safely, you can go at it with some silicone spray, PB blaster, just get it all soaked in there so it gets into the O-rings. And once it gets into the O-rings, it'll make it much easier to pull off. Now on each of the top corners, we're gonna have one T25 screw on each side. So we're gonna remove those and that should free up the radiator. With both of the screws out, you can lift the top, push it toward the engine, and it should slide out. Then we're just gonna lift straight up. Let's pull off this expansion tank next. We're gonna pull this hose off. You don't really need to, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it anyways. Same thing as all the other hoses. Quick connect, lift it up, and you just pull it straight out. We also have this one hose at the very bottom of the expansion tank, and also a level sensor that's hidden underneath there. So we're gonna remove this hose first, pull the whole expansion tank up, and then we can disconnect the connector. So let's remove this quick connect. Be careful. Two 10 millimeter bolts. These are not the right ones. Well, I think this one is, this one isn't. And you can see the connector at the bottom. Push the tab in and pull the connector off. You can also see this section right here, which slides into there. So it goes like that. You're gonna lift it up. 
So now we have access to this middle hard plastic hose. Now this attaches to the heater core, it attaches to the expansion tank, to the thermostat, and also the automatic transmission cooler. So it's actually secured with T30 screws that attach to the subframe itself. One right here, and one right here. And as you're following it, you're gonna see it's attached to the automatic transmission cooler with a quick connect right here. And as you follow it around, there's another T30 screw holding it to the subframe right next to the power steering pump. And then you have another quick connect hose that goes to the heater core. So I've got the quick connect already pulled up, the clip. Now we're just gonna pull it off. So I tried to remove the quick connect and it just was not budging. So when I kept pulling on this hose, the whole hose separated. You can see the whole one-time use clamp, everything just popped off. It actually is corroded on the inside the plastic, so it actually broke the whole connector. And part of this is because the power steering line has been leaking, and on the E90, the power steering is a hydraulic style fluid, CHF 11S. And when the hydraulic fluid, it seeps out or anything, it attracts dirt and it becomes very gummy, almost like glue. And it got all over that hose, all over the connector. So it's almost like it's glued shut. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the screw. It's a T30. For the transmission cooler hose, same thing, quick connect. Now this hose, we're just gonna follow from the expansion tank. It was attached to it. And then it gets to this T fitting right here, or almost like a Y fitting. There's a quick connect and this attaches to the thermostat right here. So we're just gonna push the quick connect off. And then you just wanna pull it off. So you can actually remove this whole plastic line, that middle line, the hard line, without removing the lower radiator hose, you would just have to wiggle it around. But since we're gonna be replacing this anyways, we're gonna remove this lower radiator hose from the thermostat as well. Now you can see there's a quick connect clip, just like all the other ones. You wanna pull that clip up, and you just have to use a pick or a flathead, pull it up, and then you're just gonna pull the hose off. Now you can see this whole hose, everything is disconnected. All we have left are the two T30 mounting screws that mount this hard plastic line to the subframe. So you're gonna need an extension and a pretty thin socket. While we're up here, we're also gonna remove this hose that also attaches to the thermostat. Now, if you have a stock hose, this is not gonna be a metal part, it's just gonna be a plastic part, and they always end up breaking. So as a good upgrade, the ECS tuning kit comes with a silicone hose for this hose and also a metal adapter. I'm not sure what brand this one is, but we're gonna be replacing it with the ECS one. This is held in with two 10 millimeter screws. You can see how this one's also already corroded. All right, so now we're underneath the car. We're gonna end up removing the thermostat and the water pump. So the water pump and thermostat are attached to each other. So we're gonna remove the bolts, the hoses, all that stuff first. So the first hose that's gonna be removed is this U-shaped hose. It goes from the water pump to the thermostat and it's a big one. It's gonna be held in with a six millimeter hose clamp or you can use a flathead, whatever 
works for you. Now, if this has never been replaced, it might be in an awkward spot. You're just gonna, that, and that's where that six millimeter socket will come into play. You can use some swivel sockets and get up in there. And I like to loosen this hose clamp as much as I can. It just makes it easier to pull it off. You can see, even with the hose clamp completely loose, it still doesn't want to move. Now we're just going to follow that U-shaped hose when it goes into the thermostat, and it should be the same style clamp. It's raining coolant. Now you can see I went through this section right here to get access and I used a pry bar to pry against the thermostat first. You don't want to damage the power steering pressure line, so just pry against that thermostat and it will pop off. This side's on the thermostat, this side's on the water pump, which I'll show all this during a reassembly as well. So next up we're going to be removing this hose clamp. This hose also attaches to the thermostat and that's also a six millimeter socket or a flathead. You just have to find the right way to access it and depending on if someone's been there before, there's going to be a multiple ways to do this and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Now technically we can just remove the thermostat right now with that hose attached just because we have everything else disassembled already. But if you were doing this just replacing the thermostat and water pump, you wouldn't have all that stuff disassembled which is why I'm going to show you how to remove that hose clamp. So you can see I've got my extension and a wall, oh, it's a wobble extension with a six millimeter socket going onto that hose clamp. What you could do is you could actually remove this bracket from this power steering hose. It's just held in with a 10 millimeter bolt on the top and attaches to the rack. To the rack. Now we need to pull that hose off. Once you have that hose clamp loosened up, you should be able to just pull it off of the thermostat. Now a lot of these clamps you are going to be reusing, so don't lose them. Now we're going to disconnect the thermostat. It's just a connector that's pushed in. So it's going to pull the connector out. Now you can see there's oil that's penetrating this connector and that's from that oil pan gasket that's leaking which we're also going to be addressing later on. But this is not a good sign because what will happen is the oil will get into the connector, it'll run up through the pins and get sucked up all the way through the harness. I think we caught this one pretty early so we should be fine but I'm going to clean up the connector before we put it back in. Now these two 10 millimeter screws are holding the thermostat to the water pump. So we're going to remove those. And now usually you wouldn't be able to remove this thermostat the way that I did if you have all the stuff in the front still attached. But since we're doing it in this method where we're taking everything apart as we're going, I'm able to just pull it out. Now if you were just replacing the water pump and thermostat, you would do all that stuff I did down here where you remove all the hoses from this thermostat, we undo those two 10 millimeter bolts and then push it out of the way, pull the water pump off the rest of the way which I'm about to show you and then you can remove the thermostat. Now the water pump has one more hose coming off of this metal pipe that's going to the side of the block. It's also a six millimeter hose clamp, so you can just use a six millimeter socket on it or a flathead. Now this one from factory will also be oriented this way, so it shouldn't be an issue to remove it. Now the only problem with this hose you're not going to be able to remove it all the way. You got to actually remove the water pump. So take off the bolts holding the water pump in place and then you're going to have to just finesse it out. So pull off the water pump off of the hose. Before we do that, let's go ahead and disconnect this water pump. We're just going to follow that same wire that went to that thermostat, follow it up, and then you're going to be able to have access to it. So you're going to push this tab in and then pull the connector off. 
Now we're going to have three aluminum bolts holding the water pump to the block itself. So we've got two down here and then one on the top right corner. And it's the other bolt with the blue dot on it. So I started with the top bolt. It's an E12 and I just got it right through here. Now if you have everything in here, all the hoses and all that would still be in the way, but you can get it this way. You're just going to need a wobble extension, a small E12 socket, and if you, can ha if you have a quarter inch drive E12 socket, it will be even easier. That way you could fit the socket in there. Now these should not be that tight. They're aluminum bolts, so they should come out fairly easy. And the reason I like to start at the top is because it's the hardest to access. And once you have that one off, then the ones on the bottom are just a piece of cake. Now we just have to remove the water pump off of that other hose. And you will just have to finesse your way out of it if you don't have everything else removed. But once you have the water pump off, if you didn't have everything else removed, then you will be able to get the thermostat out as well. Now this, all this would be a lot easier if this power steering rack and the hose was moved out of the way. So you can do that. You have to disconnect a few things. I'm going to have another video coming on this car shortly uh, about the oil pan gasket. And that's going to show you how to remove that power steering rack and get the subframe freed up. Now, like I said before, a lot of this stuff is just easier to do all as a package. So ideally, I would have to do the oil pan gasket and all of that stuff at the same time. And that way the whole subframe and all that would be off. But I still wanted to show you guys how you could do it without pulling all that off, which is why I'm doing it this way. It's gonna make it a little bit harder for me, but at least we'll get some good content out of it and it'll help you guys out in the future. And another reason why I don't like E90s, literally all of them look like this. They're all gummy. This one's not even that bad. Most of the ones I've worked on, everything is just caked up in oil and dirt. And it usually starts from that oil filter housing gasket and then the oil pan gasket as well. So that's what really kills a lot of this stuff is because that oil gets into all those connectors, gets over all of the hoses. So that's why what I always say is if you start seeing something leak, fix it before it gets worse. Next up, we're gonna remove that entire water pump inlet pipe just to replace that gasket that's behind there. It's held in with two external Torx 8 screws. There's one on the bottom right there and one on the top. Up there. And they're both the same E8 screws. Um, you're gonna have to use a quarter inch drive socket with a couple of extensions and you should be able to get it out. Now the water inlet pipe does have a hose that's attached to it. It's this one that's hanging from right here. So we're gonna pull out both together and let's hope it doesn't make a mess. Now this might be the only hose that we're not replacing just because it's not available. But here's the gasket that we're gonna be replacing right here. And we're also gonna be replacing this hose or this section that attaches to the water pump, but it's held in with the spring clamp. So you have to actually cut this clamp off and the kit that this, comes, this hose comes with has a new clamp, a new spring clamp that can go on there. So with this pipe on the ground, there is also an O-ring on the inside of the pipe the kit comes with it, so we're gonna replace the O-ring. And here is the gasket that goes on the outside of the pipe. Also replacing that. And then here is the repair kit for the elbow. You wanna slide into the same spot, secure that. And then this hose clamp goes onto the water pump side. Now this hose, like I said, is not available. Um, I'll still have the part number linked down below. All of this other stuff comes in the kit, so make sure you check all that out. You could also replace, if you're not replacing the gasket and the O-ring over here, you're not gonna remove the whole inlet pipe and you're only replacing this during your water pump replacement, you would still have to figure out a way to get something in there to cut it. So you would have to use a small Dremel tool in that case. Now we've got to clean it all up. Just like that. 
So now you want to clean up the hole that this pipe sits into. Chances are it's going to be corroded a little bit if someone's ever ran not the proper coolant or haven't or if they haven't done the coolant changes on the proper intervals. So what you can do is you can put a very, very thin layer of RTV just to ensure that it doesn't leak. And I'm talking about very, very thin. Um, I'll have the RTV that I recommend down below. It's called Curil T2 and it works really well because it doesn't really ever harden and it's very easy to clean up as well. So if somebody ever has to remove it in the future, they're not gonna sit there struggling to take off that black or gray RTV that most people put. I already got a very thin layer on here because mine is pretty corroded. I tried to clean up that hole as best as I could and now we're gonna route this back in there. Now if yours isn't corroded and in order to get that o-ring and everything to seat properly, you can just spray the o-ring down with some silicone spray and that'll help it slide right in without getting kinked. Now we can start reassembly. So we're gonna put this hose on. We're gonna still use a spring clamp. Here's a spring clamp plier, got it secured. So I'm not gonna release this until we have the water pump going into this because this needs to be oriented properly so the water pump can slide in and make good contact. So let's slide this narrow section onto that water pump inlet pipe. We're gonna use some silicone spray. Get the clamp on there first. And then slide this on. Now we're going to slide the water pump into that hose and secure it with three new bolts. Now this water pump, if your water pump didn't come with any bolts, make sure you have new bolts. Now if you're just replacing the water pump and thermostat, then you need to put your thermostat in and just let it dangle in there before you put the water pump up there because you're not gonna have enough access to put it in afterwards. For us, we have all of the hoses and everything removed so we can put the thermostat in afterwards. And before you put anything, you wanna make sure the hose clamp is on this hose. Now you want to tighten up the hose clamp, plug the water pump in with that same connector. It'll just slide right on and you should hear an audible click when it clicks in place. Only thing you do want to transfer over from the old water pump is this clip. Now this clip is what's going to secure the harness, that way it's not just dangling around. Now this harness was already melting in a couple of spots because it was hitting the exhaust from improper routing before. I fixed all that and I routed it out of the way. So my wire harness routing might be a little bit different than yours, but if yours is in good condition, just route it the same exact way. And the water pump mounting bolts are aluminum. I'll have the torque specs down below. You will feel it bottom out. And if, they're, if it's still not meeting the torque spec, don't over tighten them because they will break off. So make sure you're replacing those. And there's three, two on the bottom, one on the top corner. With our water pump nice and secure, we can secure the thermostat in place now. You wanna make sure you have the two mounting bolts and the connector pointing down. Then you should be able to see where the thermostat mounting bolts attach to the water pump. With the two 10 millimeter bolts tightened down, we can plug the thermostat back in. You want to make sure the tab is facing you. And you just want to push it straight in. Now, as part of that level three kit from ECS, we have this silicone hose that's gonna replace the rubber hose that was there. Now on one end, we're gonna have that adapter that goes up near the oil filter housing. And the other end, the one with the 90 degree bend, and this is the way it looks, this section is gonna go to the thermostat. So we're gonna route that in place. And don't forget your hose clamp. You want to get your hose clamp on there first. Now next up we have the hose that connects the water pump to the thermostat. As you can see one side sticks out further than the other. The side that sticks out further needs to go to the thermostat and the other one goes to the water pump. Now you can use some silicone spray. You're probably going to need it on this one and you can also see how I've routed these hose clamps. It's probably gonna be easier to see once I have it attached, but make sure you have the hose clamps routed that way so you can actually tighten them. 
So now you can see how I have all of the host clamps oriented. We have access to every single one. So we have this one, this one, the one right here that goes from that water inlet pipe to the water pump, and the one that's all the way in this corner that goes up to the oil filter housing area. And all of these can be accessed with a six millimeter socket. So I probably should have taken this off when I had told you guys that you could take it off for more access. So the way to put it back or to even take it off if you don't know how, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that goes on the top of this power steering rack and this bracket sits inside of there or sits on top of it. And then you have the 10 millimeter bolt. Now that we brought the car back down, we're gonna start back up here on the top. First, we're gonna put this upgraded ECS fitting in and that's what that upgraded silicone hose is gonna to attach to. You want to clean this whole area up if you have any remnants of the old hose. They usually break in there. They might leave an O-ring and stuff in there. Make sure you got it nice and cleaned out. Now with this one, you are going to need some silicone spray because we definitely don't want to damage that O-ring. So just get it on there. And then you just push it in. So that's going to be held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. And then we're going to route the silicone hose and use the clamp that's provided with this kit. And that one you can use a flathead or a seven millimeter socket. Now you want to make sure you're pushing it on there, hold it and route it into, into these brackets as well. And just hold it on there while you're tightening that clamp down. That way it secures it in its right form. Now I don't think these brackets are going to close, but we're going to try. Yeah, so that bracket's definitely not going to close anymore. It'll still hold it in place and you can even secure it with a zip tie if you'd like. We're going to remove this bottom section that, in, that encloses this whole thing. We're just going to pull that bottom clip off. Now next up we have this hard plastic hose that also has some rubber sections to it. So like I said before, we are going to be replacing the heater core on this later. And this section attaches to the hose that goes to the heater core. And that's the one that we broke off when we were disassembling. So I'm not going to put that one on here, but we are going to put all of this hose back together. And I'm going to show you how it's done. So there's three mounting bolts one, two, and three. They go straight to the subframe and they're T30 screws, bolts. Um, they look like screws. And we're gonna go ahead and put this, feed it in, and then we're gonna go ahead and secure it. This section right here goes to the thermostat. This section right here goes to the expansion tank. So we're gonna feed it through here. You wanna route it around the power steering lines, around the transmission cooler, around the hoses that are already there. And the mounting holes should line up with the subframe mounting points. Now you see the middle section that goes to the thermostat is pretty much lined up. I already sprayed it with some silicone spray inside the hose. So we're just gonna push it on and we wanna make sure that uh, that clip that secures it is actually seated. You'll hear an audible click. Now these three bolts, you just secure them to the subframe and you put them on. I'm not putting these on because I'm also going to be doing the oil pan gasket here shortly and I'll just remove them to do the oil pan gasket. But once again, they're T30. So just get them on there. Start it out with your hand first, with your fingers, that way you don't cross thread it. And you might have to, the one that's right next to the water pump, you might have to wiggle it around a little bit, but it should seat. And they have like a little cone section on the very tip and that helps it seat properly. Next up we have the expansion tank. We have one quick connect hose that goes on here. It needs to be pushed on. We have the coolant level sensor at the bottom that also needs to be plugged in. And this section goes into the dowel. This needs to go in here. And the hose at the bottom needs to go into here. And the hose at the bottom you can actually put on after the expansion tank is already in place. Now this is going to be held in with two 10 millimeters bolts and we have the incorrect ones so yours are going to look a little different. So now since this car is an automatic we do have that automatic transmission cooler that also needs to be hooked up to that same hard plastic line and there is one hose that I forgot to remove that goes from that cooler to the bottom of the radiator so I'm going to go ahead and remove that right now. 
this one right here. And you just gotta release the metal clip. It looks just like this one. You pull the clip out and then you can just pull off the hose. So here it is. This is the clip that you wanna pull up and then you can pull off the hose. My section from the inside was actually stuck on the cooler. So I actually had to kind of pry on it a little bit in order for me to pull it off because if you just try to go at it, trying to pull it against that cooler, you might break the cooler line. So you don't wanna do that. And this section is the one that goes to the radiator. You can actually, if you don't replace the whole hose, usually it's the O-ring that's leaking and you can get away with just replacing the O-ring. So the radiator that comes with the kit from ECS is made by Nissan's. Now this radiator can be used on automatic and manuals. The only difference is gonna be the, the plug on the very bottom right here. So if you're using it on a manual, it comes with a separate plug. So you have to remove this one and install that separate plug. And they, they actually have instructions that come with this radiator and it shows you the drawing. But from factory, these radiators are just gonna be made for the automatic with the automatic plug in. And that's mainly for this hose right here. With that being said, we can go ahead and install this. So now when we're installing the radiator back in, it has to slide in a certain way. So there's sections right here where it's gonna slide into, and this is what holds it on the bottom. On the top corners, we have screws. On the bottom, it's got these brackets on both sides that it has to slide into. And here are the brackets on the radiator itself. Now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have those tabs, you know where exactly those tabs are at, that way you can slide it into that section I showed earlier. And you can also use a little bit of white lithium grease or even just some silicone spray to make that a little bit easier. So the way the radiator will slide in, you wanna slide the bottom tabs in first. So you can have the top section tilted towards the engine, slide the bottom in, and then you're gonna push the top back. Now you should feel it kind of lock into place. One way to confirm that is to hold the top section and then you're gonna try to pull the bottom section out. Pull it toward the engine. And if it doesn't move, that means it's locked in place. Now we have our two T25 screws. One goes on each top corner. With the radiator in place, we can start hooking all the hoses up. Here's the hose that we had removed from the transmission cooler. This section actually screws into the radiator with a T25 screw. And it's almost the same exact screw as it was for the two top corners of the radiator. So we're gonna actually put this section into the radiator first. There is an O-ring and you wanna be careful that that O-ring does not get pinched. So we're gonna use some silicone spray to lubricate it. You can also just use coolant and then we're gonna slide it in place and screw it in. There's only one screw so it can only go in one way. You want to make sure you find the hole and the hose will actually just encapsulate the peg that's coming out of the radiator. So it should line it up perfectly. But you want to make sure that that bottom section is pushed all the way into the radiator so that O-ring is properly sealing. Now for the other end of this hose, it goes onto the transmission cooler. You just want to line it up, snap right in. Now we still have the hose from the plastic hard line that needs to go to the bottom of that transmission cooler. This one also just snaps right in. Now, every time you hear that audible click on all of these quick connects, you wanna make sure that you push the metal clip, just secure it, make sure it's nice and secure. Because sometimes you'll hear that audible click, but that clip won't go all the way down and won't be fully seated. And you wanna really make sure of that on all of these quick connects. On the passenger side of the radiator, we also have one more hose with the quick connect that goes onto the radiator itself. And this is the one that attaches to that hard metal water pump inlet pipe. I'm gonna line it up, push it in. And as you can see on this one, that quick connect did not go back. The clip is still sticking out even though the hose is fully seated. And that's why I say you wanna make sure that the clip seats 100% as well. And you can also just tug on it a little bit and make sure it's nice and secure. Now we have one more hose that goes down here and that is the lower radiator hose that attaches to the radiator and the other end goes to the thermostat. So this end goes to the thermostat and the plastic elbow end goes to the radiator. And you always gotta lube it up. And trust me, get yourself one of these cans. This is super cheap from Walmart. Super tech, super cheap, same thing. Silicone lubricant 
and this flashes off so you don't have to worry about it contaminating anything so and it works really really well we're going to put the radiator section in first and as you see once again you heard the audible click but the clip is not fully seated push it in we're good now the thermostat side is going to be really hard to see but it's down there the same thing there's a clip just push against it Now with the fan, there's a couple of spots that you have to slide into the radiator. So we've got these two tabs right here on the passenger side, they slide in. You've got tabs on the bottom, which usually there's a, a plastic holder at the bottom of the radiator. Ours was missing. It's not really necessary because these tabs are gonna be sufficient on both sides. Ideally, if you have that plastic section, you wanna transfer it over to the new radiator and then you wanna slide these in. On the driver side, we just have this one tab right here. And this is the tab that is gonna clip into place and you should hear an audible click for that. Now, you can put the upper radiator hose on before, but since we already have it off, this is gonna be a little bit easier without that being there. So we're just gonna go ahead, slide it in, and then put the upper radiator hose. Now, if you have an automatic, you are gonna have that automatic transmission cooler that needs to slide into the bottom of this and screw in but you don't need to worry about that right now. You can just scoot that transmission cooler out of the way. Now this process will be a lot easier if you had three or four hands. We only got two, so we're just gonna make it work. So while you're doing it, just try to make that transmission cooler to move it around if you have it. You heard that quick? That means we're in. We in there last swimwear. Now we got this one T25 screw that's on the top passenger side corner. And this screws the fan into the radiator. To plug the fan in, you just slide it in place. And there's two tabs on each side, which are gonna click in. And you can verify it by pulling it off a little bit. It's not going nowhere. Now we have the upper radiator hose. So the upper radiator hose is gonna go from the top of the radiator, the upper section is gonna go to this oil filter housing. And then we also have this heater hose that goes on the bottom of it. So in order to replace this, I'm gonna show this on my heater core video. Um, I know this is supposed to be the, the most ultimate E90 cooling system video. So that heater core video is just a huge process in itself. I'm gonna show that on there. But once you have that replaced, you're just gonna slide this one into the bottom of that upper radiator hose. This is where the heater hose goes. This section goes to the radiator. This section goes to the expansion tank, which I'm about to show and this section goes to the oil filter housing. Now, if your oil filter housing is corroded like this one is, you wanna to try to clean it up as much as you can. Um, if you do have issues with this hose sealing with the O-ring, you might have to use some RTV like that Cural T2 I was talking about, um, and that you'll only find out once you put this in. You don't wanna do it right now, you wanna let that O-ring try to seat if it can, and if it doesn't, then we can go on that route. And once again, you gotta get that lube. I know some people prefer to lift the clip up and then slide the hose in. It will make it a little bit easier. I like to have the clip down, that way you can hear that click to know that you're seated far enough. And then you would just slide the heater hose in from the bottom, which we're not gonna do yet until we finish replacing that heater core. Next up, we have this hose that attaches the upper radiator hose to the expansion tank. One end clips right in, the other end is going to a barbs fitting on that upper radiator hose, so you're gonna need the hose clamp. Now you should have had one from factory, if you don't, just replace one with one that fits. And this one is gonna need some lube. Just don't forget to put the hose clamp in before you're doing this. Now you wanna route it. Now you see how pliable this hose is. It's a hard plastic hose, but give it a couple years and it's gonna be super brittle. So if you're gonna ever have to remove this and it hasn't been replaced already, make sure you have a new one. Or you could do what the previous owners did on that old hose where they just patched them all together. Remember to tighten the hose clamp and that's done. All right, so now what you're really gonna need to do you're gonna put the air box back together. 
that air intake air scoop that goes to the front, put that back together with those T15 screws, and then you're done up here. Only other thing that we have to do from underneath is we need to secure that automatic transmission cooler to the fan shroud. And that's gonna be with that T25 screw. Now, I always like to show the complete reassembly of what I'm doing, but honestly, I've already spent way too much time doing this. I've spent over 10 hours on this process itself. Now, that's part of the reason why I've never filmed it before. As you guys saw, it's really hard to get the angles and get all that properly. It's just so dark. I, would, I wish I could just cut the car in half so you guys could see everything, but that's not really practical. But I really hope the angles that I was using and all that helped you guys get to judge of how you're gonna do it at home. Now, what's left to put everything back together would just be that air box, honestly, and then you're gonna fill the cooling system, check for any leaks, and you do need to bleed it initially. Now, the E90s and most newer BMWs are somewhat self-bleeding, but when we did all this work, we actually introduced a lot of air into the system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the electric water pump do most of the bleeding without having to risk overheating. So the way you wanna do this, you wanna first fill the cooling system up and keep filling it up until there's no more air coming out. And by air, you'll hear the bubbles, you'll see the bubbles. Once all that stuff stops coming out, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go inside your car, you're gonna put the car in accessory mode. Do not turn it on, just put it in accessory mode, put the heater on the highest setting that you have, and put the fan speed at the lowest setting that you have. Once you have all that done, you wanna also put the fan towards your face, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna push the gas pedal down for about 10 seconds. Now make sure you're in a quiet area, try to keep all the noise down, because you're gonna be able to hear that electric water pump turn on. And once that water pump turns on, it's gonna start circulating the coolant throughout the whole system, so you can also double check for any leaks that you might have. And that's pretty much it. You're gonna let that process happen for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you have a weak battery, make sure you hook up a battery charger. Once all that's done, you wanna keep checking that coolant level. You might need to add some more, top it up, and make sure you're using 50-50 distilled water and BMW concentrate coolant, and all that stuff is included in the kit. Now, I will show this entire bleeding procedure and filling procedure on my heater core video. I'm really not looking forward to that job. This task was very tedious. That one's gonna be even worse because we have to take apart almost all of the interior. So that heater core video is gonna be coming up soon. I can't really guarantee when it's gonna be, but I am gonna show that whole filling and bleeding procedure visually if that's what you need. And I'll have it linked down on this video once I have the other one uploaded. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in our next video.